to education in the Lima area and is proud to support Bath Middle School in today's News 6. Local support has also been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. I'm Tracy Roby from Bath Middle School. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Aaron Sawmiller. Our first segment is about a kind of bird that we often see every day perched on rooftops or sunning themselves in city parks, the pigeon. However, News 6 has found out that there are different kinds of pigeons. News 6 reporter Leah Jewell has a story. There's more to pigeons than you see in the park. I'm Leah Jewell, and today we are going to learn about racing pigeons from Tom Barnhart of the Finley Racing Pigeon Club. Mr. Barnhart, what is the difference between racing pigeons and regular pigeons? Well, the regular or common pigeons, like you see downtown or in the park, are wild or what we call feral birds, whereas racing pigeons are domestic birds that have been bred specifically to come home at fast speeds from great distances. These are basically highly conditioned, well-trained athletes. How are the bird competitions organized? The competitions are set up so that the birds are all released from a distant point at the same time. They then fly to their home loft, and when they get home, a special band comes off their leg, goes into a time clock, which stamps the time they return home. Then after the race, the clocks are opened, and the bird's speeds to their home loft are computed. It's the fastest bird that wins, not necessarily the first bird home. Where do you get the birds? Most of these birds I raised myself. I've been raising pigeons for several years, but as far as buying homing pigeons, you must go to a breeder of homing pigeons. How far do the birds fly? In competition, the birds fly anywhere from 100 to 600 miles. Now, the longest race we have in our club is 400 miles, which is from St. Louis, and we have one bird here that has flown that twice and another one that has flown it once. The other birds here on display have flown 100 miles. Now back to the studio. Today's News 6 is produced by Bath Middle School located in Bath Township, just a few miles northeast of Lima. Today, ba Bath Township is situated in Allen County, which is founded in 1831 and has a population of 112,241. Can you imagine building a house so small that you can only live there if you are about six inches tall? Of course, people are not that small, but people do enjoy building miniature dollhouses and furniture. News 6 visited Ms. Shirley Zimmerman at her dollhouse shop to find out more about this fascinating hobby. I'm Blaine Miller, and I've always been curious about how dollhouses and miniatures are made. So I came to talk with Shirley Zimmerman of She Raised to find out more about it. Mrs. Zimmerman, how did you start selling dollhouse miniatures? I had a dollhouse that was given to me when I was a young child and fell in love with them at that time. And it's just grown and grown over the years. What kind of accessories do you put in the dollhouses? Anything that you can imagine, anything that you have in your house, in and around your house, um, from tables to curtains to rugs to lamps to just anything. What are the miniatures made of? They're made of wood, metal, FEMO, which is a clay-like substance they use to make a lot of the uh, foods and things like that, uh, material, um, about anything that you would use in a normal house. Do you need special tools to make the accessories? No, not really. Just uh, scissors and little bitty nails. Of everything would be on a smaller scale, but really no special tools. How time-consuming are the miniatures to make? It depends upon how much detail that you want to put into something. The more detail, the more time it takes. Would you tell us what room boxes are 
and how they differ from the doll houses? Room boxes are generally just one room setting where a doll house has anywhere from four to six, eight, ten rooms in it. Okay, so this would be just a, a one room setting with the accessories and everything that's in it. Thank you, Ms. Zimmerman, for sharing your dollhouse miniatures with News 6. In this week's edition of Kids View, the sixth grade pondered the troubles facing today's youth. Here's what they said. Hi, I'm Jessica Harwick with today's Kids View question, which is what do you think is the biggest problem facing kids today? I think the greatest problem facing kids today is gangs and all the hurting and killing they do of other people. I think the biggest problem facing kids today is drugs because they become addicted before they realize what they're doing. I think the biggest problem facing kids today is smoking and alcohol because it's bad for your health. Our next segment is about the designs we find on many of the shirts that we wear. Have you ever wondered how the artwork is put there? Well, News 6 reporter Megan Hunt wanted to know and brings us our last story. Hi, I'm Megan Hunt, and I'm here talking to Susan Facenda about her screen printing business. Ms. Facenda, how did you get started in screen printing? Well, actually, this is something that I had done before, and I teamed up with my partners, Pam and Patty. They both have experience in other areas of artwork and screen printing, and our combined talents uh, made this business. What kind of materials can you print on? We can print on t-shirts, caps, jackets, hats, just about any kind of textile. Do you describe the process of screen printing? The process of screen printing starts with a logo or artwork and it's transferred onto an acetate which is a transparency. We expose a screen in a wooden frame and the screen is like a film and when we expose it in the exposure unit it creates a picture. The picture is sprayed out with water. We mount it on the machine here with our textiles and then we push the screen down on top. We use a squeegee. We squeegee the ink across it and then we go through the dryer, the dryer cures the ink, we take the shirts off, and then they're all done. Do you come up with your own designs? Some of them we do. A lot of the artwork is done by Pam, and some people just give us an idea of how we're going to do their artwork, and then some people already have their artwork ready for us. What are your future plans? Our future plans are maybe sometime next year to open up a storefront and do a lot of novelty items, t-shirts and caps, for local schools and do a lot of screen printing in the back of the shop. Ms. Facinda, thank you for telling us all about screen printing. You're welcome. Now back to the studio. This week in Critics Corner, Bath Middle School chose Freak the Mighty, written by Roman Philbrick. This book is about two seventh grade boys who develop an unusual friendship. Kevin is a genius, physically disabled, and small for his age. Maxwell is learning disabled and is large and strong for his age. The two boys experience some exciting but dangerous adventures together. As their friendship deepens, they begin to depend on each other and become known as Freak the Mighty. Read the book and see why the students of Bath Middle School recommend it. That's all for this, this week's show. Be sure to turn in next week when the 6th grade class from Woodmore Elementary visits News 6. Company is committed to education in the Lima area and is proud to support Bath Middle School in today's News 6. Local support has also been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU TV. Mm -hmm.